Octopus? Possibly not. Spaceship? Probably yes. So, all these PIRs have now been demonstrated. These ones are left. We still have some strobe lights, including this one, which is a bit of a classic. Got some PIRs over here. And this is um, not really an old PIR, but it's got a, a unique lens system on that, which I want to show you. Got this one, which was the first of the um, more reliable detectors. Got this one, which is similar to the Gemini, but it just hasn't got the ultrasonics. Used to use loads of them in the uh, late 80s and 90s. Rachel Gardel Apollo, which is quite a popular detector in its day, especially for domestics. Got the first generation Jawtech. And then we have some ceiling PIRs. And this one, it's a miniature PIR, which you um, drilled into walls. And that lens poked out the uh, front. Good idea? Well, not really. <laughs> Go through that in a bit. And then there's this one as well which I took out of a um, installation the other day. Quite a basic PIR with a massive lens on the front. However, rigged up already on the battery, I have this ceiling PIR. Now, this is an Arrowhead PIR, and I can't remember the exact model number. And um, Now this is something I asked Mr. Che to do for me. And it was for my intro at the start, so I can pretend it's a flying saucer, because that's exactly what it looks like. Well, not claiming I've ever seen a flying saucer before, but if I did, then this will probably be what it looked like. Yeah, it does look better in the dark. Anyway, this is what we're going to start with. So, I'm just going to turn the camera off, because when this is up at the ceiling, which is where it's supposed to go, mounted this way, and you take the two screws out, the lid could just be pulled down. When you put it on a tabletop and you take the two screws out, it involves some swear words to get it apart. And I've already trapped my fingers in here and said a few rude words. So I think I might just open this up with the camera off. First question is the model number. And um, I'm pretty sure Arrowhead used to do detectors like this, but it's not an Arrowhead. Or it might have been, but it's now a Scantronic 1084. Maybe Scantronic bought out Arrowhead, I'm not quite sure. Now, this PCB I recognise, and they used to do different types of detectors. And I'm pretty sure that this PCB was part of a normal PIR which you'd put on your wall, not on your ceiling. But what they've done is they've used it for the ceiling detector as well. Now there's one bit that is new on here. I actually know there's a few bits that are new. And that's these LEDs here. And these line up with the holes around the edge. Like this. I won't put it on because it might involve some swear words trying to get it off again. But as you can see, you've got the yellow, green, and you've got a green on this side as well, if I line it up correctly. So what do the LEDs mean? Well, these two in the middle are the important ones. That means it's detected you. They are, they are the alarm LEDs. And when they're lit, then the relay, which is here, then signals to the alarm system that it's detected you. Now these ones can only light when the PIR is activated and the microwave has also got you. So let's have a look at both them different detectors. You've got the PIR 
Now when that sees motion, the green LEDs on the edge come on. And that works in a normal way and you've got a lens. And this time it's a 360 degree PIR, it goes on the ceiling. That way around obviously. And then this is a bit difficult to see because this seems to have something like a bag over the actual lens. I'm not quite sure why they put that on there. Might be easier to see from the other side. But you've got your segments all around the outside. So these ones are designed to look across the room like this. So it's up on your ceiling and it's looking down all the way around 360 degrees. Then you've got your lower zone here and then you've got your zone which looks directly under, under the detector here. And that's probably the easiest one to see. Yeah, there you go. There's three little segments in there. All right, to see all the zones on this lens, what I've done is I've plonked my LED right in the middle of where the pyroelectric detector would normally sit. Oh yes, here we go. Just feel the excitement. There is one of the zones that looks directly underneath the detector. There's another one. So anyone walking underneath the detector will activate that one. That'll be your one. Then you walk out of it, that'll be your zero. That'll be your one. That'll be your zero. And that'll be your one. And depending on how many pulses you've set the PIR for, that could be your PIR alarm activation. This particular type of detector is never going to be able to look directly across the room. It has to look down, and that's because the pyroelectric detector is facing down, and without a special mirror system, there's no way you can bounce that to look directly this way. So let's aim it around and see where the next mirror is. If you've got this low down on the ceiling, then this might not get that far across the room. If you mounted this quite high on the ceiling, then that could probably look quite a distance. So it depends on the height of your ceiling as well. So there is your zone on that bit. As we go around, there's that zone. Do I need to go all the way around? Not really. So there's one. And let's walk um, underneath it a bit further. And um, it's probably going to be around here somewhere. Yep, there it is. So this is known as a dual technology detector. And that's because you've got your PIR and the microwave. They are your dual technologies. Both PIR and microwave must detect motion at the same time to give you an alarm output. Greatly reduces false alarms. Um, other switches we've got on here are... Well, you've got your range adjustment for the microwave detector. You don't want that up too much, otherwise it'd be looking out shop windows. Um, you've got some links here. Now if you move, I believe it's this one, to the bottom here, then I think what it's doing is, yeah, we've now disabled the, uh, the PIR, so now it's working off microwave only, and this is just for test purposes. So when the microwave comes on, you get the alarm condition. We we'll never leave it in that condition. And if you put it on the other side, then we are ignoring the microwave and we are just going from PIR only. I don't really know why you'd want to do that because you can see individually what the two detectors are doing anyway. I mean, if the PIR's got you, the green comes on. And if the microwave's got you, the yellow comes on. So quite why you'd need to test them both individually, I don't know, but I suppose um, one reason is maybe you can't see the LEDs from where you're walking around the room and making sure it's picking you up, and you wanted the control panel to tell you, and the control panel could make a bleep or something when it detects you. So perhaps that's what it's for, so I'm just going to put that link back on one pin only so it's not connected to anything. And this one here turns off the LEDs, I presume. Yep, 
So now the detector is powered up, working normally, but it doesn't display any LEDs or alarm statuses. Uh, maybe if you'd want that, if it was in a shop and you didn't want people noticing the detector or trying to walk around the room and try and find out where it works and where it doesn't. If I put it on that pin, which is the trouble side, then there must be some kind of watchdog circuit inside here. And if either of the technologies goes wrong, then it probably just flashes the red alarm LEDs. So that's enabling the trouble display. So that's it. PCB comes out by, I think, pulling that over, allowing the PCB to come out very easily. Yeah, there we go. Wasn't that easy. So you put your screws in first and then you put the PCB in separately. It's quite a high quality PCB this. I mean, if you look at some of the detectors we've got on the table here, um, let's get one of a similar age, probably this one. Then you've just got a PCB. There's no shielding or anything on it. This one, it's got shielding all the way around it. So if you go um, outside a shop and turn on a radio transmitter, a very powerful one, then you're very unlikely to disturb this particular detector here. Okay, so that is the Scantronic 1084. So now I'll just go through the walk testing of the detector and to make it a bit more realistic I've moved it from the worktop and I'll put it somewhere nearer the ceiling. Well it's actually blue tacked up there so providing the blue tack holds we should be fine. Let's start with the PIR. Difficult to see the LEDs from here, but I can see that the green LED was lit then. And again, so we're just waiting for the microwave. So if I step back or forwards, there we go. We have the microwave and we have an alarm activation. Might be easier if I um, put the camera so you can see the LEDs a little, a little bit better. Where's the other one? There it is, it's on the back. So, the same thing. Let's stand still. I move across the detector, I'm more likely to get the PIR than the microwave. There's the PIR, no alarm activation. Wait for it to clear. Do the PIR again, there's a PIR. So it's not gonna alarm until the microwave activates, which is more sensitive to you walking towards and away from the unit. So PIR, move towards, and there's your microwave and your Alarm activation. There we go, there's the microwave, no alarm activation. And there's both. Before it falls off, that's the end of the Scantronic. I forget what it's called now.